This is called the birdhouse. This is kind of the relaxation zone. And you actually lean against the walls. The walls are your furniture. There's no room for furniture when you build this small. So you have to build everything in. This is obviously not sealed. The weather can blow right in here, but we're gonna put smoked glass in these triangles. And then we're gonna put a big round view window here that overlooks the valley. Basically, these walls hang on these threaded rods. This is kind of a tension structure. So the, the grid beam parts are... The steel is the grid beam. It works like a kid's erector set or Legos or Meccano. Kids outgrow those toys. But with grid beam, you keep evolving and you build bigger, more sophisticated projects. I did spend one year in one of these. I had it all sealed up. I had a wood stove in it. I had electricity. I had, you know, solar electricity. That was nearly 40 years ago. That was four times as big as this, which was a mistake. I made it way too big and something like this. This is only four by eight feet, the footprint on this. Ridiculously small. And yet, I could have a party in here. It's plenty big to have half a dozen people hang out. And down underneath, this could be a bedroom or massive amounts of storage. I'm gonna pop that panel off and then you can see the basement. Okay, are you guys clear? Right here. Yeah. I grew up with an erector set and I was trained from a very early age that everything has to fit together hundreds of different ways. What's amazing is all the pieces are four feet or eight foot long. The, all the grid beam. So, so it's like simple, standard. simple stuff. Here you can see the little feet on the ground. That's one of these guys. They just plug right in. So that's one of your components? One of the components, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you saw how quickly the sides can come on and off. That's what I mean. This whole thing could go together so or come down in a few hours. And that's all the tools you need. Just one wrench actually. This is the grid beam shop, the, the dream factory, as we like to refer to it. Scooter. The wheels, they don't turn side to side, it just goes straight. But it's a, it's a prototype. And what this is, is a tablet holder. And it will allow you to put a tablet anywhere in space. I designed this when I heard that Steve Jobs was in the hospital and he was too weak to hold a tablet. These are the basic elements, which are two by twos, which is a common building material in the United States. We drill it with a repeating hole pattern and whatever the width of the material, you can make grid beam out of anything. Whatever the width, that's your hole spacing. Here's a folding chair. It's made out of mainly two foot lengths. Folds up. This is a carpet sample that we put the uh, grommets in and it is comfortable little chair. The same pieces over and over again. The lengths on these are three foot long, whereas the smaller chairs are two foot long. Here's the hardware. Very simple furniture nut and bolt. Nice little chair for a little person. This chair is made out of all one foot pieces and two 18 inch lengths. So we like to work with modular lengths. This is a, a three level bunk bed and all the pieces in it are three feet and six feet. And then there's a few two-footers and one-footers in it. We had a gentleman come visit us that wanted to build a set of beds for his three boys. Like within a week, Phil had constructed this one. And so he left with a large quantity of grid beam to make his own. And each one of these holes is another opportunity to go someplace else, to do something else to build off of. This is a tri-joint. When you put three pieces together in an XYZ like this, you get these really strong joints. And the more of these XYZ joints that you have in a project, the more strength you're going to get out of. They don't want to tear out. The joints do not want to tear out because they're squeezed into this common corner. We only use one tool. Here's your toolbox, right? Here. When we, this is the tool. Either that <laughs> or when we build with the metal, one wrench. Because you just want it simple. Because all the yeah. parts are pre-made, pre-cut, and they all fit each other.
So then we flip the stick and intersect the holes again on the next pass. And we'll cut them into our various lengths. This is the shortest usable length. We call it a two-holer. So with a two-holer, you can actually create a tri-joint. There's a three-holer, and there's a four-holer, and five, and we go up to a six, and then an eight. 18 inches, 24 inches, 30 inches, which is desk height, 36, 48, on up to eight feet. This is how we ship grid beam in boxes that look like grid beam. There's our, some of our two-foot lengths. We drill it, cut it, sand the ends, and ship. The wood and the aluminum version are totally interchangeable with each other. They share the same dimensions. I put a bigger hole because I use a larger bolt in the aluminum. But sometimes we'll do a prototype in wood and then substitute out some of the parts for the metal when we know there's a lot of stress on it. This is a bicycle bottom bracket so that you can make pedal-powered machines. One of the things that's really hard to do, especially when you're a kid, is putting wheels on a project. This is a bolt welded onto a plate that has the grid beam hole pattern. If I wanted to put a wheel, you know, here, everything's lined up. I could just drop some bolts in there and you have a wheel mounted. You can mount wheels in seconds. Once somebody has a collection of the part, you can build anything very, very quickly. It's almost scary how quickly you can build things. This is called a log arch and I will be able to roll this over a log that's laying on the ground, grab it with these hooks. So you could literally bring a log into town with this. Well, I haven't put the hitch part on, but it will attach to a vehicle. So this is a really a modular system. Like these pieces are eight feet long, 30 inch, three feet. What's fun about this is it's just like playing, you know? These are the big tri-lap joints that give it its strength. This is a, almost a quarter inch wall thickness on these, so it's like really strong. And I'm building a sawmill out of the same material. Huh. Wow, so you can apply this to anything. Yes. Seemingly. I call this the grid beam game. And the grid beam game is inventing a new future. Back in 1990, we were inspired by a friend of ours who used to talk about solar trains we were able to acquire a chassis of a maintenance vehicle from the train operators and we stripped it down we got rid of several hundred pounds worth of metal and then reattached our grid beams to it and we built up our own framework on it our own skeleton framework you have to wait like 10 seconds solar rail engineer <laughs> and then hit the, uh, we put deep cycle batteries in it phil took the, the solar panels off of his house We put a, a large uh, 20 horsepower motor in it and we got permission to test drive this from Fort Bragg to Willits. That's 40 miles away. It just works like a like a erector set or Legos. It's so easy to build and change. It's the ultimate yeah. prototyping system. You get there really quick to, to, yeah. to find out if it's real or not. I wanted to see just how tiny we could make some tiny houses. This one here is three by six feet. I just built this in the last week or so. I can just get in here and relax. I, I've yet to spend a night in it, but that is my plan. It's all grid beam. It's three feet wide, six feet long, three feet tall, and it costs uh, $350. Well, all of the pieces with the holes in it is the grid beam. I made the basic frame out of the aluminum, as you know. Uh -huh. The aluminum is interchangeable. It's the same dimensions as the wood, but it's a lot stronger. So I use that on the understructure and in the corners, and then the rest of it I fill in with the wood grid beam. So you can see how the wheel attaches to the grid beam component here. I make little adapters, like that's just a piece of grid beam and I drilled a three quarter inch hole through it right here. That has a three quarter inch hole drilled through it and then it mates right up to the rest of the grid beam. To push around, you can push it right here. 
and I, I like that. I, uh -huh. And I think we need to do more of this kind of stuff. But the tiniest of the tiny houses that I built, it's a two foot cube, the two ends fold open so then you sleep on a platform off the ground. It was uh, just an experiment. That's what's cool about grid beam is that it allows you to take those chances that you normally wouldn't because you don't have to worry about destroying your materials. Mm -hmm. We grew up uh, reading Mad Magazine and Popular Science and Popular Mechanics. We've been collecting them since we were kids. Sometimes you'll see that the ideas are the same problems then as we might be having now, only technology has caught up now and we now have the manufacturing abilities to address a lot of things that weren't quite possible back then. And of course, uh, Meccano, which was the European equivalent of Erector, we very much liken grid beam to, to this type of construction problem-solving technology, which also nowadays is called STEM. Of course, Lego makes their machine version of, we're studying what they're doing. Whatever you see here, we can replicate in grid beam, only life-size. We like to say that you become the little Lego man when you build with grid beam because you're building real projects. And so that brings us up to the 70s. And of course, these were instrumental books for, for do-it-yourselfers back then. Then Phil discovered this book, which became the Bible for a few of us back in uh, the mid-70s. Obviously, it's what inspired Phil to do his portable house. Ken Isaacs here was a, uh, a college professor and he was showing his students how to do problem solving and create furniture and structures. It allowed you to create structures without using hammer and nail, which is a very violent form of construction. This book was one of those game-changing books for a number of us in our design group. Here's the book that started it all, How to Build Your Own Living Structures by Ken Isaacs. Ken showed how easy it was to build with a two-by-two -two framing system. He was showing us how to do this kind of construction. And we always needed to have a drill handy. And back then, there weren't battery drills. Everything had a cord. So it was a real hassle to like, you know, we needed a hole here, not here. And so we kept having to add more holes. And finally, after years of doing that, Phil was the first one that decided to jump off the cliff and start drilling all of the holes. Here's the visual comparison between the two. Matrix is what it was called then with an uneven hole pattern. I knew what to do. I knew you had to drill all the holes and you had to make it modular lengths of itself. This is a jig that I use when I make the aluminum grid beam. I lay this on a piece of raw tubing and then put this on my drill press here and just run it through. And some people say, well, why do you drill all those holes when you're only going to use a few of them? And that's because grid beam will have a long future if you drill all the holes. If you only drill the holes where you think you need them, then that part will only do one thing. And grid beam should be able to do thousands or millions of things. Years went by and we kept building and developing the technology and in 1994, we came out with this self-published, we called it box beam back then. There's Phil in one of his solar electric cars. And we showed people how to make their own. Hi, I'm Phil Jurgensen. And I'm Richard Jurgensen. And, and we're, we're the, the Box, box beam, beam Brothers. We invented Box Beam to allow people today to build things for themselves, to feel the thrill of inventing. I'm going to lift this up and show you how I built it using the box beam components. We've been open source since the very beginning. This is the transmission here, and here are the two adapter plates on either side. Here's another component right off the shelf. We found that the bolt holes match up on this swivel wheel. Notice the tri-joint. It's the heart of the box beam building system. This chair was inspired by the Holland furniture movement, the still. Form follows function. The only weld I had to do on the whole thing was make this little front end assembly. I even made the front forks out of box beam. And then of course we, st we kept at it and a professional writer joined us because she wanted to help clean up our self-published book and we came out with this in 2007. There's about 300 projects in here and 
we're pretty sure we have at least this many more images to go in our subsequent book. So there's always projects to build. This is Rona, my daughter who yeah. grew up with this. Um, oh, so my bed, I changed it out every week. Um, my dad would come in. One time I would have a bunk bed with a slide. Next day I would have like, I'm like, oh, I don't really want another bed. Let me put a desk underneath it. In this image, I built a relaxation lounge. So you had all the parts in your room. Yeah, I actually thought every kid had it because... <laughs> And I actually, well now I'm a college student, um, my major is electrical engineering and I actually did take grid beam with me to college. I built a bed and then I interchanged it out because I needed to paint. And so I, I built two easels. Now I'm using it right now to hold my lettuce plants. So yeah, so when I move out, I'm just gonna take it all apart and then I'll do whatever. Now all my friends are always like, hey, I need your help to build this. Like, can you show me? I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, it's right here in the book, so. If you discount the holes, you can duplicate these frames just by looking at photos. Maybe not, you know two or three photos of something and you've, and you've got it. In fact, there's the whole frame right there of the tractor. And I, could, I could duplicate that in 10 minutes and that's a really valuable thing to be able, to, not just to build one, but to say, that worked, I'm gonna build another one right now. And you can do it like that and they're perfect. And if somebody across the country looked at that photo, they could build an exact frame just like yours. It's painful to weld duplicates without proper jigs and fixtures. Grid beam is automatically perfect every time. So different teams of people can work on the same project at different locations because they have that same exact frame. So it's ideal for collaborations and that's what we need is people working together to solve common problems. After I saw Star Wars, I wanted my own X-Wing. And so I made mine. It's real. It's solar powered. And you know, the one in the movie's fake. I have the only real X-Wing. This is called the Vanda. I took the solar panels off my house and put them on there. And then my wife made me put them back on the house. And again, I, I steal parts from these things so they don't all exist anymore. This is a submersible that's been down to 20,000 feet under the ocean, built by the University of Hawaii. And they built this for 10 cents on the dollar. And it went down deep in the ocean and they were studying those uh, volcanic vents with it. This could be a 3D printer, 3D router. This is all made of the big beam. You can do anything for a fraction of the cost. And up until we put this lower body on, we're gonna figure out where to drill the hole here. Yeah, we could actually do the steering with this right here. Why don't we throw the body on this real quick? Just okay. I see people being able to build their own tiny house and tiny electric car for easily two or three thousand dollars because that's the cost of the components. And when you build it yourself, if something should go wrong, since you built it, you are the specialist and you're the one that can fix it. Oh yeah, woohoo! You don't have to go run to a mechanic and have them work on your vehicle. Because again, you're the one that built it. I'm missing the solar panels, but this is a solar electric tractor. It has a four speed transmission and this is how I would shift. And first gear is 172 to one gear ratio. So this would climb a tree if it could get the traction incredibly strong. That's a two horse electric motor mounted directly to the transmission. I acquired a golf cart rear end. This is the drive part out of a golf cart and electric motor fits right on here. So I had to build a grid beam frame. And what's really cool about this is all the pieces are, all these back here are four feet long. I just have some of these just sitting here, four feet, four feet, four, four, as I move forward, these two are three foot long. These are two foot long and these are one foot long. The only parts that I had to make were these four plates and then the, the whole spring assembly fit right into the grid beam. And this is four by four feet. If I wanted to in 30 minutes, I could have this built into a, a structure with the rest of this grid beam here. There's a powered wheelbarrow over there. See, I keep, 
I never have the money to buy new parts, so I strip parts off of one vehicle to finish another one. But this has a four-speed transmission in it, and I normally have two sets of caster wheels back here. This is how I'd carry sand and gravel around here on the property. All made and framed with grid beam. And by the way, we have no monopolies on this, and we want people to make their own grid beam. And when they do, their parts are interchangeable with our parts. As you can see, everything goes together thousands of different ways. It's so much fun. These are four feet long, 18 inches. This is another component that's a bicycle head tube. I welded onto this plate and that allows me to put a front steering system on it. These pieces are four feet long, three feet, maybe that's 30 inches and 15 inches. And then I have a seat that goes across here. You can see the bolts on these little plates that hold the wheels on. You cannot make a simpler wheel arrangement than something like this. And, and then you just put a nut on the end, slide your wheel on. So you can put wheels on projects like that. This can go on. I think I assembled this in seven minutes. Computers are powerful because they share the same operating system. And when we build things, Everything is built for one purpose. You can't take the part off of a Ford and put it on a Chevy or a piece of a Maytag and put it on. Nothing is interchangeable. And this is what we're trying to change is have the same pieces do thousands of different jobs. This started off as a bike rack. You tighten it up and it, it puts pressure against the ceiling. So all of a sudden it's a freestanding bike rack. But then in the process of playing around, found out that all of a sudden you could put shelves on it. And when you put shelves on it, all of a sudden you start to build a wall. This can be taken apart and repurposed into hundreds of other projects over the course of its lifetime. Because as we all know, nothing stays the same. And our needs are always changing. When we move, we get to reinvent ourselves. And it's really cool in that you can start out. And here's an opportunity to constantly keep hybridizing and upgrading your reality. And you can put it at any level you want. Putting a little tri-joint in right here, all of a sudden you can make it a table. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's just, it's astonishing. So. Okay. These are components that I've developed over the years they all share the grid beam hole spacing and it allows me to build machines like these are bearings takes a one inch axle these are feet that the uh, metal grid beam plugs into if I want to build like a tiny house and not have the legs press into the ground so these are all modular components that expand the usability of grid beam these are called button shelves and they will go in any hole you want. They just spin in and out. You can put them in any hole, little places to put your coffee or whatever. And we're also always looking for things that fit our hole pattern. So the world changed when we found these casters, which are available at every hardware store, that pop in these holes. And all of a sudden now, when you're mobile, it's a game changer. Again, finding things that fit. So this was a two feet by two feet. Again, the local hardware store, these trays. All of a sudden, it was like, oh my God, this is the coolest little storage cart. Here's a cute little desk, two foot by two foot, and it has a four foot skeletal frame on it with a couple of button shelves. You know, sitting is the new smoking, as they say, so uh, this allows you to uh, stand up and... Stand up desk? <laughs> yes. <laughs> One of the challenges with grid beam is can I replicate that? Can I make that out of grid beams? A uh, better wheelbarrow with handles fold down if you want to store it. And you'll notice the wheelbarrow is very low to the ground. When you're lifting dirt, you only have to lift it half as high with a wheelbarrow of this height. It's a better wheelbarrow. And every stick in it is two feet long. So it's like really easy to build these kinds of things. This is something I, I built. He's my younger brother and I built this to sort of keep him in line. I was going to put a boxing glove on it, but it turns out it, <laughs> it turned on me. Karma. And it has to do with the hole spacing on this because I drilled it with an even number of holes. So the holes were offset by half a hole. And that, so when it stretched out, it made it go into a curve. And actually we've done some buildings based on this that are uh, instantly set up and take down. Of course, this is a 
like the model version of it, but you can build these any size you want. <laughs> when you start playing with it, you can come up with new toys. I just push on these handles, but then again, it wants to go in a circle and it wants to bite me. It's like you don't know what you're getting into and things happen so fast. And you're almost always successful because all the holes are always lined up. You don't need lots of tools. This is a park bench and it uses uh, five pieces of Telspar tubing. That's this material. And it's the same stuff they make stop signs and stuff with the posts. This one is four feet, three feet, and five feet. There's only, there's two tri-lap joints. And then I made this little foot out of three eighths so that it won't tip. <laughs> oh, easy geometry. Wow, piece of cake getting out of it. So our dream is to, this is our property down in this valley. And our dream is to create a grid beam village when we have our projects a little more together. This doesn't pay bills, this sucks money. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars with no returns. It's going to help a lot of people invent a new future. If we get enough people building with this, embracing, embracing it as a mainframe, kind of using that computer analogy again, where we all share a hole pattern and we can start making products, things that, that fit into the holes. Whenever we can come up with something that matches into the hole pattern, it is the pattern that connects, if you will. And if we get enough people sharing that whole pattern, and if we can create a platform to communicate with one another, we can start. We can change the world in a little way. I call this the grid beam game. It's, it's a lot more fun than doing this because you're working with real stuff. We don't do virtual, we do the real deal. Why screw around with halfway measures and all you end up with looking at something on a screen and saying, wow, that would be cool. Well, we build it and we, and we use it. Then we know it's either cool or not. Oops, that wheel's grabbing there a little bit. And if not, you can... Then you take it apart and you make the next thing effortless yeah it's, it moves around very easily and I I like that, the idea of it that could be a new sport tiny house races yeah 